Hello, my name's Mark from G-Code Tutor, and I'm here today with Practical Machinist to talk about some issues we might face when programming G-Code and how we can solve them. The problem we might come across is when to use an R or I, J, and K when programming radiuses. So a good rule to farm that I always go by is if we're cutting a 90 degree or 180 degree radius, I would use an R value. These are designed for corner radiuses. So R would be the right way to program this. But if we're doing compound radiuses, that's a bit more complex and radiuses that blend together, we would use I, J and then possibly K for the Z axes. But we're looking at two axes programming here. So I would use I and J to program the center point of that radius and then the end point to give us that perfect rad every time. So I and J would be used when we're using compound radiuses or radiuses that have to blend together. And when we're just using corner radiuses or 180 degree radiuses, I would use the R value. Now, since I'm talking about cutting radiuses using I and J, there's another thing we need to be aware of. Did you know that center point of the radius is usually an incremental, but we can change it to absolute. So what I mean by that is if we use G90, which is our absolute coordinate system, we can use G90.1. And this tells the machine that the center point of that radius comes from our datum position and not the last known tool position. It puts that center point in absolute mode. But normally machines default to G91.1, and this means it's from the last known position of the tool. So the position of that center of the radius would be taken from the last known position of that cutter before we perform that radius program. So G90.1 puts our center point of our radius in absolute positioning system, and G91.1 puts it in incremental mode. Now remember, most machines do default to incremental, so you're probably used to programming this way. If for some reason you find things are not working as it should, check that your G90.1 or G91.1 is correct. Now this feeds nicely into the next problem we may face. When we're programming our safety lines, here is an example of my safety line. You can see that I have the G91.1 right there in the safety line to make sure that the radiuses behave how I expect them to. But I also have G40 and G80 on that safety line. So G40 cancels any cutter compensation and G80 cancels any cycles that's active. Now I put this line at the beginning after each tool change. So this way the machine is always in a default state for each section of the program. This way I can jump into the program at any point and run any tool from the tool change and I know that my cutter compensation has been cancelled and there's no active cycles. So this can save a lot of problems when we're jumping in and out of the program, running different parts of the program. If we only have this at the beginning of the program, we would have to run through the entire program each time we have to try and take a cut or test a certain part of the program to make sure it's right. So by doing a safety line in every single block of code after the tool change, we always know the machine is in a default state so we can just pop in and run that tool with no problems. So another issue I often see people get wrong when programming G-code on a CNC lathe is when using constant surface cutting speed. Now quite often most operations on a lathe use constant spindle speed, that G97. But when we're using constant surface cutting speed, the G96, that's used when we're roughing down and the diameter's changing and we're moving the spindle speed in relationship to the diameter of the part and the material. Then when we use constant surface cutting speed, we have to have a G50 speed clamp. If we miss this speed clamp, the machine, as it gets near the center point of that material, is gonna start speeding up to an infinite speed and the machine's gonna start shaking, making loads of noise, and that spindle is trying to go much faster than it's allowed to go. So what we do is we add a speed clamp. Now the G50 speed clamp stops that spindle from exceeding a certain speed. It's like a speed limit for that spindle. So by adding G50 and then an S value, say in this case 3000, we know that spindle will never go above 3000 RPM, no matter how small that diameter gets. So once the spindle reaches that maximum RPM, it won't go any further. So when we're programming with G96, always remember to add a speed clamp with G50. 
So if you want to learn more tips and tricks about G-Code programming, head over to my website, gcodetutor.com. Over there, I have a page full of free articles, lots of free videos, and also some paid courses. So you can learn to program G-Code, CAD CAM, Machine Shop Maths, and GD&T.